from a new regular city sound there. Oh, these, these, are, uh, these are part of. Yeah. All right, I okay. wanted to mention them. You uh, were talking about earlier about Mr. Leach. You've got to speak up for that okay. little uh, recorder thing. How much you like the simple search feature, and uh, I think some other thing related to that, but it just reminded me that uh, the thing that uh, that you get used to in Vim, and that I like a lot about it, is that a lot, a lot of features at first seem kind of uh, uh, not... Uh, well, anyways, in Emacs they have they have this term called Dwim. You know, it stands for for do what I mean. Do what I mean. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And this is like you know, it's like smart, uh -huh. like stuff that tries to figure out what you mean, and it's really impressive when it works, and then it's really infuriating when <laughs> when it doesn't work. And and so so then. <laughs> They are using Emacs. But yeah, so like you know, like uh, Mr. Leach was saying, the uh, like the search feature in uh, Chrome and Firefox is uh, kind of like dwim, and it's nice when it works, but it is often not showing me what I want, and you know, most of the time you just want. Recency and primacy, like but those are the things that humans usually care about. And uh, a simple, like you know, uh, longest common substring match is, is, is all you need. Uh, it's much usually much more effective. But, but these things are, are built for like things like Chrome are built for people who uh, they're, they're built for for. They go for literally like as many people as possible using all the exact same product. And so mm. it's like, of course. <laughs> Here they come again. They heard you say as many people as possible. Yeah. And so one of the things that I, in, that I, that I think uh, that I always mention that I really like about them is, is the completion. And, and people like we use IDEs think you're crazy because um, you know, it, the, the great thing about IDEs is that it has like context sensitive completion that does like project wide uh, semantic inspection, which is very valuable and it's now starting to reach text editors like them through LSP. So that's great, but, but the, I think the 80% case, or at least the 60% case, Definitely. Just in case again, this comes by. Yeah. Uh, it's an unfortunate. I have no idea what's going on. It, isn't this this uh, Friday when all the pupils are out on the streets? But it's not so late, so. Well, they haven't called all of them yet, right? Yes. So. <laughs> still. Yeah. Sorry for for breaking this again. I I think it's. Yeah. Awful. Next time we'll stop you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I will be the judge. Right. Dread. Please be going. The the uh, the eighty percent case is, or or at least like more than fifty percent case, I think is you know what you want, and it's very close to you know something else that you wrote, and so like control N in Vim is is looking literally at things below, and control P is is li looking literally at the things above. Does, does control N wrap? Yeah. yeah, it yeah. does. It um, but that. but the first things that will come up will, will be um, it will prefer things that are nearer the, than things that are above. Okay? And if you want to prefer things that are above, you use Control P. And then there's all the variations like Control X, L, and, and uh, all that other stuff. I mean, so it's like you have this like sort of like mishmash of tools. Like you, you know, you have like. It, it's, it feels like kind of a, a, of a mishmash. Like these are all the different completion modes. Um, and so like, yeah, you have to choose from those and it's sort of like a co conscious decision. It's a small amount of cognitive load, but at first it's a co cognitive load, but then afterwards it becomes like really precise. It's a really precise way of saying, I know what I want and I know how to get what I want. 
Whereas the, the Emacs way would be just there would be just one of these and it would like use machine learning or something to like predict, you know, whatever. <laughs> How many of those combinations do you use on a daily basis? Um, you know, it, you sort of you, you start I, I just re I, I would say about five. I just recently started using control X K, which chooses from a dictionary. See how it says dict slash words on the on the right side? You you, you can set um you can set dictionary to a list of, of things to search, which is great. Is that is that the same as the spelling dictionary? Uh, you can. Th okay, the help claims that you can make it use the spelling thing, but I haven't figured out how to do it. And I was, <laughs> I'm about to, to file a bug upstream to them about this if I can it's guarantee that I'm probably not going to. It should be possible. Because the spelling has a very nice data structure that is perfectly suitable yeah. for searching words and similar words. Yeah. So can you make sense of this? It says when the option is empty or an entry spell is present, spell checking is enabled. The currently active spelling is used. Yeah. I don't know. So so I tried various like things, it's but it's in in the the distance. And I, I tried to like enable spelling and. and Seem to work, but anyways, yeah, that would be really nice. So which one was that? That was Control X D. Control X K, and so and the mnemonic is like, what is the mnemonic? You would. Yep. Maybe. I don't know, but also Control X L. I, I've started to use when I know that something is at the beginning of the line, and and all, and a lot of these things are just like you're trying to avoid overwriting your unnamed register a lot of times. At least that's my bad habit. <laughs> It's like, I don't want to offer an unnamed register because I didn't put it in a name register. <laughs> or I already have too many named registers on my stack and I don't want to... I mean, it's just, it's like, you know, a, a lot of text editing is just like shuffling around registers and get, getting different ways to like get things. And, but anyways, this kind of segues into this plugin called Vim Dabba, which uh, T. Pope made. Uh, that guy here. Yeah, that, that guy. It, all it is, really, it, it's very simple, and at first, like, some people had some really snarky responses when he released this uh, sometime last year, um, because it's so simple, but, but it actually is really valuable, I think. I mean, I tried and failed to use DBX. Is everyone familiar with DBX? Mm -hmm. DBX is the classic, it, it's like the only plugin in Vim that uses the Perl interface. <laughs> <laughs> the only one who successfully. I mean, so, so it, and it tries to be Dwim. This is another case of Dwim, which, in my opinion, just sort of falls short. It, you, you start it, and then it asks you a bunch of fucking questions like, what's your password? What's your username? What's your, what, all the fields in a connection string. And then it saves that somewhere. And, you, and of course, great, that's great. Like the first time you don't want to read the documentation, okay, if I save it somewhere, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work next time that you start it. It's gonna ask you all the questions that are really annoying. I don't know, and plus, if it doesn't work, you have no idea what went wrong. Do so. interrupt to a question, just if you go back. Yeah. This, uh, on the top left, does it say SAP, blah? Yeah, SAP, Sybase. It's off my desk. <laughs> SAP? Uh, Hannah, oh, SAP Hannah, yeah. Well, it's in, the, in the cloud somewhere, so... Yeah, so I guess it supports more things than Dadbot, maybe, maybe not, but... So Dadbot has, like... <coughs> uh, it's pretty simple to, to implement your own adapter, too, so you just go and auto-load and you look at... Uh, Tim Pope is very fond of this, what's called, uh, I think he calls it the strategy pattern. All these are just, you know, implementing the nuts and bolts of each type of connecting to a database. And they're pretty simple, pretty small. <coughs> you could just copy paste this and, and make your own adapter for, for a new one and then hopefully submit it upstream. But, but then, the, but, 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 so, and then once you do that, you have your connection string, and you save it in, like, say, uh, a file. I have mine saved. Uh, since this is being recorded, I don't, like, want <laughs> to post the password or whatever anyway, but, 
Um, and and, and then once it's once it's in there, like um, it's in it's in this. Uh, so I'll just uh, show you an example. Yeah. So that's it. It it it's this db command, mm -hmm. and then you you notice um, oops. You notice that the, at the front here is this variable where I have the connection string saved and I give it a query. What good is that? Well, it's really good because all of the, of the conventions that you've learned in Vim, you have the quick fix list, you have, you have buffers, you have windows, um, you have Vim navigation. You, you can you can go back and, and you know search through your history. You get all this stuff for free just because it's using it's just using Vim in the simplest way possible. And, and and but but it's saving you the hassle of like figuring out how to to get the stupid text into your text editor. Like and, and it's just a really simple thing. But it isn't dwim. It's do what I say, it's not do what I mean. That, that's 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 what I can you edit the queries in a buffer? Um, there might be a way to do that, but right now I've just been getting by by using the the uh, the command line window here. You know, I just I don't know. I kind of I kind of abuse like the read read line bindings, which allow you to use uh -huh. like Emacs style bindings in here. And, or or if I get tired of that, then so I just that, that's read line or well. Um, it's not, but there's a there's a there's a, um, a problem. I may have to stop you guys just for I don't know how well the recording is, but you may have to uh, um, repeat the question before you answer. Uh, the question was: uh, Are there are, are there read line bindings in my command line? And the answer is yes, kind of because I'm using <laughs> another <laughs> plugin. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a very simple plugin. Though. I mean. Oh, look and look at the latest commit. Who wrote the latest commit? You did. I did. Something. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty, pretty into those read line style bindings. The commit that I did, it gives you this. You know, when you hit Control U and Bash, and then you hit Control Y, you want it to paste, right? Ah. So that's what that does. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so. That. I found out about this other thing, Fire in Vim. I found out about this yesterday. Finally, someone did this, and it looks like it actually is pretty good. I, I haven't installed it yet, but you can just see what's going on here. He has, a, he has a text area, and you are using an actual NeoVim instance. And you don't have to like right click or, or do a command to like open it in your browser and then say like go back. It just it just happens in the text area. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. Yeah, I've been, I've been waiting for that for like ten, ten years. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I wanted to happen in Chrome though because I. Well, there used to be uh, a plugin which calls on an external editor, and once you write to it, it flashes the text area hmm. and updates it and it's by Christian what's his name uh, is it one of these um, right here uh, I think, can you make I think Tentodactyl used to do that as well yeah this looks like no the, the it was uh, just as text yeah no. it's all text it's all text yep, yeah I used to use that but again it's kind of clunky it's like you have to you you hit the thing and then it has to open a new editor and then now you're out of the context mm -hmm. and you save it and you go back and hopefully it focuses the right window. But it's, I guess if, if it's embedded then it's not using your configuration and stuff. Oh no, it is, it, it is. is. Yeah, well, it's calling on a new window and inside of it whatever you want. So you basically set your configuration so it opens a something and within you open a terminal, mm -hmm, within yeah. the terminal you give the command to, uh, to run Vim, yeah, yeah. and then of course it runs your config. Yeah, I mean with the, with the embedded version, if it uses the config. Uh, There's no reason I, I shouldn't do that. 
Yeah, to but do it. It yeah. sounds a bit unsafe. I don't want any files to be read from my browser. Yes, well, what can you do? Anyways, but... Well, the way that it's implemented is just mm -hmm. with pipes, if that makes any difference. I have to give the guy credit definitely to give a well, solution, let's say at least a good workaround. And uh, for me, it saved my sanity editing a wiki page. Yeah. yeah. So definitely, you know, once you hit uh, Control W to raise the last word, boom, there goes your whole <laughs> web page with all the text that you've said. There's no undo and yeah. blah, blah, blah. You don't have all the features that you would have in them. So now I got them. So that was making it a lot, lot easier. And theory, of course, they can use uh, something to make GFIN open in a given window ID. Yes. And they accept that uh, GTK3 and stuff is using its own rendering of all its own widgets and 